After I graduated from high school, I went to a missionary training school, and it was um, there kind of almost as an afterthought. I went on outreach as part of that training program to Russia and just immediately fell in love with the people, the culture, everything. When my mom and dad joined Youth with a Mission and I actually got to come to Eastern Europe for the first time, that's when I knew this is where I want to be for the rest of my life. In 1995, there were a lot of missionaries in Atlanta at the time um, because of the Olympics. They actually set up a club and I went to the club and Rachel was there with a bunch of her friends and I spent my last bit of support money and uh, just bought a round of uh, chocolate milk and uh, pink lemonade for him. And then I saw Rachel and I was like, Oh, wow. Um, kind of walked up to her and I was like, hey, baby, what's your call? And uh, she said, uh, former Soviet Union. And it just like blew my mind. We got married here in El Paso at St. Clements. Um, and then a month later, we were, we were back in Russia together. I think it helps that we moved to Russia when we were young uh, and we didn't really have any idea what life should be like. So we just kind of accepted Russia as being normal, um, even though looking back now, it was, it was really an extreme time and situation. And we were just praying that God would open doors. He spoke to us that we were supposed to do what no one else wanted to do. So we saw a crisis pregnancy center open um, in Perm. We were reaching out to the street kids, working in prisons, uh, church planning. Uh, we had a team that actually visited 2,000 homes, an area where the gospel had never been preached before. Uh, we were able to be a part of uh, fighting human trafficking. and Yeah, uh, we started King's Kids in Russia. Um, there had been a King's Kids team years before, but we kind of got it going again. God has a plan for reaching each person in Russia, and we just want to be a part of His plan. I mean, we used to joke that we would die and be buried there. Our, our kids, in recent years, I think they'd really begun to put down roots. Uh, Charlie was getting ready to attend um, music university in Moscow. Hannah was in college in Moscow. We had big vision for 20 years out. And, um, you know, Andy was involved in a lot of different businesses and projects that with a very long-term vision. We, we had no other plans. You know, living in Russia for 23 years, a lot of geopol geopolitical situations um, that would have that affected us negatively as U.S. citizens. And uh, when this happened, we actually sat down on a Monday uh, and we decided as a family that we were staying. Um, and it was the very next day, uh, we received multiple warnings from, I think it was four different sources, unrelated to each other, but people I trusted, basically warning us that we would be used as leverage in this um, conflict um, and better to get out. Uh, so that really hit us hard. Um, and so it was a Tuesday. Uh, very next day, we had to make the decision to leave. Um, and on Saturday, we were at the airport um, getting one of the last Aeroflot flights out of Russia um, and just happened to be going to the country of Kyrgyzstan. When we first left, we really thought that things would blow up quickly die down and that we would be back that fall. We realized, no, this is, this is not happening. We're, we've left, we're not going back. Those first six months to a year, were, there were a lot of tears. I mean, I, I remember just sitting in Burger King and with Charlie and he just started weeping openly. Um, we were pretty broken. We were pretty messed up. The thing that probably helped us cope the most was our community. We would not have made it through this past year if it wasn't for the love and support of St. Clements. I really think about what it must have been like for Mary and Joseph in this incredibly stressful situation. She's about to give birth. They show up in a strange place um, with nothing really um, and, and, and being left to fend for themselves. It was encouraging for me to realize um, how Exile or Exodus is a part of the Bible story and just how Jesus and his family, they had to run away to Egypt. Being a missionary to Russia was so much my identity. Um, you know, I'm a wife, I'm a mom, but we had really started to become a part of the Russian society and culture there in, in Moscow and 
having all of that stripped away, you really come to understand that it's not about your job, it's not about even your calling, it's about being a child of God. I'm not God's helper. He, he's my helper, and um, he was faithful to us for all those years in Russia. I, I was recently uh, in a leadership training school for missionaries from that part of the world. It, it really hit me. Hebrews 11, it's the people of faith. And then at the end of the chapter, it says, none of them All right, we'll try that again. What it says is that none of them received what was promised. And only together with us would um, they be made perfect. And it's really interesting to, to understand that it wasn't up to us to finish the work in Russia. So <clears throat> it was it, it was great to be there um, and see you know these young people who genuinely are doing much better than we ever did in ministry, doing much more amazing things. Um, also, a little bittersweet, of course. At the end of the day, we serve a loving God who sees every detail of our lives from beginning to end, and. He knows what's best for us. Sometimes you just don't understand what's going on or why, and that's okay. And <clears throat> you, you might not even know how to pray or what to pray for, um, but the, the Spirit Himself intercedes for us with groanings that human words cannot express. Just rest in that.